match of the week, something special. A stoppage time winner by the birthday boy himself, newcomer to Vancouver FC, Eamon Salouf. Breaks the hearts of Valor fans. Down a man, but not without hope. Salouf, Salouf, the man was on fire, and Vancouver beat Valor 2-1. And it was a true proverbial six-pointer. And Vancouver now looking pretty solid in the fifth position right now in the Canadian Premier League. This is match night. Gareth Wheeler, Jordan Wilson, John Conway with you. Plenty to get into. Everything that happened in match week 20 in the Canadian Premier League. We'll look ahead to the Canadian Championship second legs, which uh, end up getting played on Tuesday. And we'll look ahead to Canada and the upcoming international window with games against the U.S. and Mexico. But let's start off where we left off. Uh, Vancouver, that state, I mean, such an important 2-1 victory over Valor. Uh, top of the table, Forge play to a goalless draw with York United, potentially with an eye ahead to that CanChamp game on Tuesday against Toronto FC. Uh, it was a weekend of late goals, a late penalty by Dan Nimick. Goal number eight of the season, finished 1-1 between them and Atletico Ottawa and Cavalry. 90 plus one, Dan Klopp getting the goal and the struggles for Pacific continue as they head into their Canadian Championship tie on Tuesday against Vancouver Whitecaps. Uh, so here's your up-to-date standings in the Canadian Premier League. <laughs> Those are huge three points. With eight games to go in the Canadian Premier League, Vancouver has a six-point cushion over Valor and Pacific. Now, Pacific does have a game in hand. It looks like a four-horse race in terms of who will win the regular season. Forge are odds-on favorites to go on and win it. Uh, they're on 35 points with a really chasing pack. Your guess is as good as mine, Ottawa Cavalry, York United. Any one of them more than capable of closing that gap. Um, so we always do pre-match interviews for our Tony Bet matches of the week. Generally get good stuff from the coaches as well. I chatted with Ashton Gopi, uh, Gopi uh, Vancouver FC manager, ahead of this one. And I had to ask about Iman Salouf. And then all of a sudden, he's like, can predict the future. Uh, here's the interview from a little bit earlier on today. I, I think uh, I have to be patient with him. He has not played 90-minute games uh, for a while. And I feel that it's important to get him fit. Uh, it's his birthday today. So I expect him to come in the game and, and do some special uh, actions and score maybe the winning goal. Look at that smile. He was on to something. It's Salou's 23rd birthday. Second game for Vancouver. Came off the bench as well. And then we just need to show you how this played out. Vancouver down 10 men. It was one-way traffic, John. Valor was coming in waves. And it looked like there was only one team that was going to go out and score the match winner. And it wasn't Vancouver. It was a competitive game from the outset. And Gabby Batar. One of his better games this season does really well in transition. Great finish here, John. Yeah, great finish. I just think Valor will be disappointed again. Like, this leads to the goal that wins the game for Salouf. The defending here has to be better. There's plenty of numbers back. Yeah. Somebody needs to track Batar after the pass. Nobody does, and they're unable to deal with it, and, they, and he puts it away. Second half, uh, I mean, there were chances. Saved there by Callum Irving. Some kind of debate on whether the ball crossed the line or not. What do we see? No chance. I mean, it's close. Great save. Huge save. Cal Murray again, standing on his head, makes big saves at big moments. Linesman was in a decent enough position as well. You think just a little bit off the line, maybe didn't have the... We'll, we'll see. It's one of those It's too close to call. Uh, James Cameron was sent off 20 minutes for the, in the 70th minute here. This was a second cautionable offense. We say it every week. As a defender, just don't, as a player, just don't touch the ball because you get a cheap yellow, and then that yellow that he actually needs or that he gives is the one to do it. But this right here, that man, Sean Hundle, swivel came off because Sean Hundle was just in that good of form playing up top as that number nine. And, and fortune favors the Braver, it just drops to him right in that moment, and he goes up, and that's 1 1. Vancouver's holding on. This is some brilliance here from a special player. Salute, three goals on the season with Pacific. Whoop, see you later. Beats this costly near post. Potentially the goalkeeper could have done better, John. But the feet, I mean, this was the Salouf that was electric last season with Pacific. I mean, I go back to your opening. Salouf, Salouf, Salouf is on fire. <laughs> I love it. I mean, what a finish there. Again, I, I, I think Valor will be disappointed in their defending. I mean, there's a lot of bodies around the ball. Yeah. I mean, last gasp effort. you got to make a play. And... Salouf gets it off, and Viscosi, I think, again, you know, you'd be disappointed in that one. He'd, he'd want that one back and make a big save there. But, 
you know, what a finish, what a finish for the birthday boy, and what a call by Afshin Gopi. No kidding. Uh, three massive points for Vancouver FC. This is a team that's been struggling as of late, and now they have a little bit of a cushion. Convincing performance by Vancouver today, Jordan? Yeah, it was, and it was needed, because for the next four to the next five, they're playing top four teams, right? So that's going to be tough for them to, to get all those points. Um, but you need to beat that team that's right under you, that's been knocking on your door. And now that six-point spread, yeah, they're looking good for playoffs. I mean, you add Salufin in the mix here with that attacking of Batar, Kintav, Diaz. I mean, that adds another element to them that just makes them more and more dangerous. I think if they're just able to sort out defensively, because they've had some costly errors on the backside, if they're able to sort that out, the team should be in the playoffs. I, you know, I was away last week when the trade with that sent Salouf to Vancouver and, and Dyer to Pacific went down. I just thought it was a great deal for Vancouver because Salouf isn't a winger. He's not going to do the defensive work. But if he can play just underneath Wero Diaz, that seems like the best position for him. Take away the, uh, the, the defensive responsibility and allow him to go in and do, do what he does best. He's a match winner, and he showed it right there, John. He, he definitely is. And again, like the dangerousness of those front four guys, if yeah. they get going and they get hot here in this last little bit, like look out. The only negative was the fact that Cameron was sent off. We didn't show it. He was cautioned in the first half. It was kind of one of those fouls. It was like 50-50, whether it was a caution. Then he kicked the ball away and made the decision easy for the referee. We see it far too often, Jordan. I know it really bothers you. Yeah, it's one of those positions, the first foul, I'm fine if you get beat as well. If he made contact with the referee, eye contact, and said, look, I'm sorry, that's my last one, I don't think he gets booked. But you kick the ball away and you make it easy for the referee to say, hey, yellow. As a defensive midfielder, as a right back, left back, center back, to get an early yellow card, you play on eggshells, and you have a situation like that where you put your team at 10 men, and it just wasn't needed. It's not necessary. Just leave the ball alone. Towards the end of the first half, I made a comment to Adam Jenkins in the booth. Like, if I'm Jordan Faria, I'm, I'm gagging. Run Give me the him. ball, man. Yeah. Get it to me as Run much, and I'm going to go at you because you're sitting on a yellow. You can't stick with me with my pace. If I take a touch, you're going to have to foul me. And, you know, it took a little bit longer than I expected, actually. I thought, you know, as the second half started, the energy was high for both teams. And, uh, you know, it took a little bit longer, but he finally got there, and, and Jordan Freer gets by him, and he's got to pull him down. It's a young player in, in Cameron who will learn from this mistake. As for Valor, I mean, it's not game over for them. They're certainly still in the mix here. No Temi Antanoglu, uh, sorry, uh, in this one. One of the top players in the CPL this season. Still five of the remaining eight games are at home. So they're still very much, much in the mix. That six points looks a lot right now, but they have a preferable schedule compared to other teams like Vancouver. Yeah, it's just momentum, though, right? That's the thing. Like, getting a result today, even when it was 1-1, if they got that point, you're looking at you're still taking a step up and you're in the forward trajectory. But to lose, it's, they're not down and out, but today was probably the day to really make that jump. You know, Fido Santos brought it up before the game that, you know, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. It's one game. And I think he does a good job of tempering his team with that. I, I, I do think it's... It's not one that's going to send you off the cliff here and, and ruin your season, but you would like to get at least a point out of this. Obviously, three points would have been great, but now you go home with nothing. Or you, they play again at home and as well. Nothing. But so. you got to get your points at home now leading up to get yourself back in. Six points is a lot. There's only one thing that's over in terms of Valor. It's any chance of Nico Giantsopoulos landing with Valor in the immediate future. Felder said Santos not appreciative of his actions, throwing the ball in the field as Valor was trying to take a quick throw. He said, you're not coming here anymore. So <laughs> Giantsopoulos to Valor any time in the future. Not happening, at least according to Phil Descent. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's Cavs season. It happened maybe a month later than usual, but Cavalry are on a roll. They've won five in a row. They beat, uh, they beat Pacific 1-0. Dan Klomp gets a late winner. Here we go again, John Conway. It's like this time of the year, the business end, and Cavalry just hits another level. How do you explain this? Because we've seen this story time and time again. Well, that's, that's the thing. We've seen it over and over. It's a team that knows that, hey, we're never out of this. We usually get hot around you know, mid to late summer, and then we roll right into the fall and end up making it to a final and winning trophies. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what they do, and they're confident in that. And they know it's not, that it's not out of their grasp. And again, they're back doing it, and it's a team who, even in the last ditch moments of this game, they pull it off, and Klomp gets the game winner, and they pick up another three points. Great what, scenes, what by out, the way, great scenes. What sticks out to me, too, is that Klomp misses the goal that he should have scored that we see him score yeah. two minutes before this. 
and then they stick with it. They do a play where they go back post to Trafford. He plays it back across. Obviously, it falls. It wasn't, it wasn't by design, but it falls perfectly to Klopp. But it's just that effort to keep going and keep pushing for three points. Some teams say, you know what, it's no, no, we take that point. Not Calvary. They're like, you know what, we're going to go. We're going to try to get five in a row. And they do that. So with this team, again, that's why I always said I wasn't worried about them making playoffs. But now they're looking to go and, and be the first place team. One one soccer pundit, and we like to weigh in where we think teams are going to finish. Came out and said weeks ago that they thought that Cavalry was going to win the league. And I kind of laughed it off at that time. They're right back in the mix. Adam Jenkins, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you're, you're actually using names. <laughs> wow. Adam Jenkins wow. said it. Wow. Yeah. He doubled down, tripled down, he said. I wasn't like, going to wow. use names. I did. But you did. I snitched. Okay. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I think when I left before vacation, your former side, York United, were top the table. Not any longer. They had a chance to go back atop the table when they played Forge to kick off the match week. Uh, they played to a nil-nil draw. Not a great performance by York in that one. I, I just kind of felt that Forge might have that eye on the can champ, Jordan. Uh, what did you make of the proceeding? It was a cagey game. It was cagey, and I think that chance right there by Parr, that could have really set things off. But it was just one of those situations when you're a Forge player where, or a Forge uh, team, you went out and you played the way that you do, but there just wasn't that quality on the offensive end. I think with York as well, they got into positions like this, but there weren't that many moments where they shot from outside the box or they were dangerous in between the lines. It's one of those games where you kind of knew that it would be this way in a way, there, where you don't want to lose, but you have opportunities like this for Asarichi, who was the late sub, sub into the match, where normally he hits that one with oh. some gusto and venom, and that was the biggest chance for, for York. There's a player at the far post, too. If he yeah. just hits that across goal, I mean, that's a really good now. run to the, far, to the far post as well. It, I mean, if Forge had beaten York or they played a draw, doesn't really make headlines. What well, would have made headlines if York came away with full win. three points in that game, right? Yeah, for it sure. It seems like that's the next step for them. And then also, too, it crossed my mind watching it because we're calling the game with Adam Jenkins that Benjamin Moore is obviously pushing his team to go out and win, but this is a situation where you just don't want to lose as well. Like, you value that a little bit more. I'm not saying they played for the tie. Well, you're but at I'm, home. you got to win. I you get gotta it. Win. But I see 70 minutes as well. I said, I looked at both teams, and they kind of just said, you know what? I think Forge had Tuesday on the mind a little bit, but York yeah. said, hey, we don't want to lose two in a row. At, at home, if you beat Forge, the fact that it is a look-ahead game for Forge, you're playing at home, then you're like, yeah. There's everything so, I, I don't think it. you're feeling good yeah. after coming away with a draw in that match. Uh, headlines in our nation's capital when it comes to Atletico Ottawa and the comments made by their manager, uh, by, by their manager post-match after another late penalty given up and points conceded by Atletico Ottawa. What Carlos Gonzalez said and their reaction is coming up next on Match Night. Uh, today we lose because of a bad decision of the refereeing, uh, a clear offside in the penalty action, and uh, you know, uh, I'm very disappointed, very disappointed because we fight so much, we work so hard, and uh, it seems that it's not enough, you know, it seems that when you have it in your, in your fingers, uh, the, somebody takes it from you, so uh, I'm, as I say, very disappointed because I think that uh, today's a confirmation of what I've been feeling in the last few months. You know, in the last few months, I've been feeling that somebody don't want, don't want us to win the league, and uh, today, with the clear decision of of, of the of the refs of, of the action, the last action is a clear confirmation. Not not only on the field, also off the field. I'm living and, and feeling uh, weird things. Uh, one month ago. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm very disappointed because I think that if we want to make everybody grow the league, everything has to grow. And, uh, you know, this is not acceptable. Wow, some controversial comments made by Carlos Gonzalez, Atletico Ottawa's manager, after the 1-1 draw with Halifax Wanderers. Wheeler Wilson Conway with you. Uh, he wasn't happy based upon a call that wasn't made. It seemed like perhaps a Halifax player was offside in the build-up to the penalty that was given. We'll take a look at that in a moment. The usual cerebral Gonzalez then came out it hit out against the Canadian Premier League, claiming that the league was holding up potential player signings as well. Neither of those statements will sit well, either with Canada Soccer and the referees, as well as the Canadian Premier League. It seems like Atletico Ottawa being tied up against the salary cap, and that's been the bigger issue other than uh, rather than anything else. But on the offside call, and 
the fact that somebody doesn't want Atletico Ottawa to win. I mean, I, he might have a little bit of a claim here. This is the best angle that we have, that perhaps a player was just a step off side. If you, if you see it right here, and the ball will inevitably be played over the top, and that player will be part of the buildup that's leading to the penalty. I mean, look, this isn't a league where there's VAR. Okay, like it's pretty clear if it's that close, that's a very difficult call to make. And then to complain about it afterwards, like there is work to do here. Like there's chances for players to come back. It's Aparicio flying into that challenge on Rampersad, which inevitably sunk them and the penalty is given. Like it, it's kind of funny because, you know, players and coaches complain about, you know, the processes of VAR at times and then when we live in a world which traditionally has been and in the Canadian Premier League, human error is involved i mean can you really be that upset about that call not being made then being made in that moment like it just seems to me it's a little bit of um it's it's taking a maybe a little bit of the distraction away from the fact that atletico ottawa have struggled over the last couple months three three and five since mid-june yeah i think i think i may add to it even more though coming out and saying that something some other forces against them uh, i i think this just adds more pressure to them to get it right and inside the room I don't know what's going on inside the room when the leader of the team, the head coach, is making these comments and he feels like there's something else forcing them to, or causing them to lose games. For this instance, I, I want to dissect a couple of the words. He used the words appear to be offsides. And for me, yeah, it appears that way, but is it clear and obvious? And I think that's really the definition of offsides, clear and obvious. And, you know, from our standpoint in that camera view, it's not clear and obvious to me that he's offsides. He could be. He could, could be. not be. Not clear and obvious. So, in that point, I, you know, the referee has the right to keep his flag down and proceed with the game. And, you know, the, the bigger issue is they get numbers back, they don't defend well, and Aparicio comes in, you know, flying and takes out Rampersad. So, you know, I, again, I think the comments are kind of odd. Um, I think there's a lot of other stuff going on with his team and his organization that has set him off. Um, and he came out after the game and was upset. What sticks out to me with these comments was similar to last year, the, the six games where they were leaking goals towards the end of the match. Yeah. And um, there's no shade on Carlos Gonzalez and, and Atletico Ottawa, but however, that was a glaring issue, late game goals. And in a situation, I'm looking at this clip where the ball's played over top, a defender could go and win it, doesn't. There's still numbers there. The ball happens, it comes to Rampersad. Even if... Aparicio wasn't there. There's players that could go and step and maybe get a block shot. It's about finishing and closing a game. And I get that there might be margins where players are offside and not offside, but you can only control what you can control, and that is that action. If they do that last action, they leave Halifax Wanderers with three points, yeah. and they're, they're nearing top of the table. You know, it's interesting to me, like, someone doesn't want us to win. Like, Who's that someone? Yeah. I think of Denny Green, the old NFL. Yeah, coach. Totally. Names, name them, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I think it's who, interesting, who? like, it's really hard to, even, even with, you know, there's eight teams in the league, with everything that goes on with the referees, everything that goes on within the league, like, for a conspiracy to really be pulled off, I mean, there's a lot of people that need to be involved. I think, And, like, for people to keep that quiet, like, that's impossible. <laughs> Like, I just don't see how that's possible. I, to, I think uh, that's something you say to your team, like, in closed doors. Like, you say, like, you know, it's stacked against us. We had all these signings off season. Like, don't really. But to go out, you, again, you have to really go and state facts. I don't think Atletico Ottawa, in the, it, it, looking at the season, has been hard done by. I really don't. Right. If he doesn't make these comments, I mean, we're not having a conversation like this. It's just yeah. like the accusation seems a little bit over the top. Although I understand if he feels aggrieved in that moment, that, that's, that's completely fair. As for the game itself, really the point doesn't suit either side. I guess if you're at Letico, Ottawa, you're still within touching distance of the top of the table. In Halifax, they're still in dead last. They've, they've one game in hand to make up, but now they're nine points back of a playoff spot with work to do. And Atletico Ottawa thought they won this. That's a great through ball by Del, Del Campo, John. I mean, to, what a pass. Sammy Salter. What a pass. I mean, he, he puts it on the back door Oof. of Nimick, slips it in, good weight on the ball. Salter does a good job. I actually think, and we discussed this, Wheels, that he could have probably, you know, taken it on his left foot, but he does a good job of holding up and getting the shot off. And then here, you know Manny. Manny is just, he's going to run and fight all over the place, but at that time, he's just a little too yeah, he knows aggressive, it. and he knows what he's done. And... But what, and the craziest thing is Dan Nimick has eight goals on the season. He's one goal back 
of the top the, of the Golden Boot League in the Canadian Premier League. All these are coming on penalties. Seven Halifax, seven goals. On, seven, goals. seven goals on pens. The team has eight penalty goals. No other team in the CPL has more than four. And Nimick has seven of them, seven of them himself. And counting. And counting. They're, 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 they had Morelli, who was automatic from, from the penalty spot. Sam Salter. And, and now Nimick. And Salter, yeah. uh, two, last year, two, no, two, two seasons, seasons ago. ago. Yeah, and now Dan Nimick. He doesn't miss. Well, he's missed once. Missed this one. Year. This one, it's crazy. I remember years ago uh, in MLS, Amato Gavaro had, I think, 13 penalties one season and won the won the Golden Boot that year. Wow, wow, That's crazy. I, can Nimic do it? <laughs> well, okay, it's possible. What, what's more likely, Nimic winning the Golden Boot or Halifax Wanderers making the playoffs? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I might have to go with. I Nimic can give you a third option: Atlético Ottawa winning the Shield. Oof. Are any of these realistic possibilities? Yeah, I think the biggest one would be Atletico Ottawa winning the Shield, for okay. sure. Halifax making the playoffs. Patrice Geyser has said that they're going to make it. Dan Nimick's been public saying that they're going to make it. I'm just waiting to see them turn that corner. Uh, Nine but games me, to go. I I'm waiting to see them turn that corner. I haven't seen it yet. Maybe it's coming. Maybe they're saving it for last for a dramatic effect. But for me, and an a side that I was very confident about making the playoffs, and the furthest or the highest they've been in the season is seventh for a week. Uh, it, it's looking bleak. Based on the three that you gave, I'll, I'll take Nimic for the for the. That's what I would take too. <laughs> yeah, I'll take Nimic for That's the. That's the one I would. That take is too. wild. Honestly, that it, is so wild. It, it, it could happen. Oh. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, coming up, 